So there are a lot of factors that affect the heart rate. We didn't cover all of them, just some of the main ones. And anytime you increase the heart rate, you increase the cardiac output. When you decrease the heart rate, you decrease the cardiac output. But heart rate isn't the only thing that affects the cardiac output because the stroke volume, the amount of blood pushed out with each heartbeat, also makes a difference. So let's consider the stroke volume a little more carefully. The stroke volume depends on three main factors. The preload, the contraction strength, which is sometimes called the contractility, and the afterload. Let's start with the preload. The preload refers to the amount of blood that's in the ventricle before it contracts. The more blood you have in the ventricle before it contracts, the more blood the ventricle can push out. So in general, the higher the preload, the higher the stroke volume. However, there is such a thing as too much of a good thing, and too much preload can actually stretch the heart too far, and it can reduce its ability to contract. So up to a certain point, increasing the preload is going to increase your stroke volume, but once you go too far and overstretch the heart, then it's going to start decreasing the strength of the contraction, and that will end up decreasing, and that will end up decreasing the stroke volume. The preload is affected by several things. One of these is the blood volume. The higher the blood volume, the more blood there is to go into the ventricle, and the higher the preload. So if you have a higher blood volume, you'll get a higher preload. If you have a lower blood volume, you'll get a lower preload. That's going to affect the stroke volume and therefore affect the cardiac output. Exercise is something else that can affect the preload. When you're exercising, when you're moving around, you're actually helping to return more blood to the heart. When you're having more muscle contractions throughout your arms and your legs, it pushes more blood back to your heart. That increases the preload. That increase in preload can increase the stroke volume. In general, we said that a higher heart rate increases the cardiac output, and this is generally true. But if you get to situations of very high heart rate, like a heart rate that's beating more than 180 times a minute, that's three times in a second, then the heart is actually beating so quickly that it decreases the preload. The heart's beating so fast, there's not enough time to fill the ventricles. You get a lower preload, and that can actually lower your stroke volume and therefore reduce the cardiac output. The second factor that's important when considering stroke volume after preload is contraction strength or contractility. The more the heart contracts, the stronger the contraction is, the more blood is going to be pushed out. And the weaker the contraction, less blood is going to be pushed out. We consider the contractility or the contraction strength of the heart by looking at the ejection fraction. The ejection fraction refers to the percentage of blood in the ventricle that gets pushed out. A normal ejection fraction runs about 50 to 55 percent. So the ventricle fills up with blood, about 50 to 55 percent of that blood under normal circumstances gets pushed into the artery. When the heart is working hard, when you're really active, you can actually get up to about 90 percent ejection fraction. So that's a strong contraction pushing almost all of the blood out. When you're resting, you should keep in mind that not all the blood gets pushed out of the heart with each contraction, only about half. Some things that can affect the contractility or the contraction strength include the sympathetic nervous system. Because remember, the sympathetic nervous system not only increases the heart rate, it also increases the contraction strength. So you contract harder, you get a higher ejection fraction, you're pushing more blood out. That increases the cardiac output. Your blood calcium level can also affect the stroke volume. There's varying opinions on this, but in general, it seems that more calcium, remember calcium is the ion that comes into the heart to trigger contraction, more calcium in your blood means more calcium can get into the heart. That causes a stronger contraction to increase your stroke volume and increase your cardiac output. Another way to increase your cardiac output is with cardiovascular training. If you actually do aerobic exercise, cardiovascular exercise, then you're strengthening your heart muscle by using it. Like all the rest of the muscles in our body, the heart gets stronger when we use it. The more you exercise your heart, the stronger the muscle is and the stronger that contraction is going to be. That increases your stroke volume. People who work out regularly tend to have lower heart rates than people who don't. Who don't. That's because their contraction strength is so much 
harder, they push out more stroke volume, that their heart rate doesn't need to be as high to maintain a decent blood pressure. So when the contraction strength goes up, it decreases your resting heart rate. The final thing I want to talk about that affects stroke volume is the afterload. The afterload refers to all of the forces that are opposed to the ejection of blood from the ventricle, all the forces that make it harder to push blood out. These can include the blood pressure. The higher your blood pressure, the higher the pressure in your arteries, the harder it is to push more blood into those arteries. So high blood pressure increases your afterload, makes it harder to push blood out, and that decreases your stroke volume and can decrease your cardiac output. Some other things that can affect this are the physical conditions of the arteries or of the heart. We've talked about valvular stenosis where the valves are narrowed or atherosclerosis where the arteries are narrowed by, fill, by build up or atherosclerosis where the arteries are narrowed by a buildup of fatty deposits. In both cases, you've narrowed the opening that you're pushing the blood into and that is going to make it harder to push the blood through. That increases the afterload, which decreases the stroke volume and decreases the cardiac output. 